Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. Hello, I'm Professor Code and this is the Forex Supermodel and we're going to be looking at secrets behind moving averages. Now, um, the reason we're doing this is because I think that most people get very little out of moving averages. In fact, moving averages are, in our view, completely useless unless you actually look at them in a slightly different way. So, um, let's begin then. So, uh, most traders uh, talk about moving averages, but what, what, what are moving averages is, is they're, they're basically averages of data usually price data over a, a given period of time. So the 10 day moving average is, is, is an average of uh, that data over the 10 days. And depending on what type of moving average you use um, is to how the, uh, the average is calculated. So, so you can have it straight if you like in the simple moving averages or you can have other things like so. So you've got, you know, most people are familiar with EMAs, exponential moving average, averages, TMAs, less so, triangular moving averages, and SMAs, uh, simple moving averages. Now, okay, so, so moving averages are averages uh, of uh, data points, usually market closes, which um, are... Uh, over a given period of time, and every, most people traders are familiar with, um, <coughs> excuse me, clicking on the old uh, uh, moving average tab, clicking it up to whatever they want. So uh, the common ones are, you know, the, the most traders use is 20, 50, 100, and 200. You know, if you're looking at those moving averages, you're basically staring at the majority of what traders are looking at. A few, uh, you know, the few of the uh, um, uh, indicators are using defaults, which are different. You know, you'll often see nine, uh, nine day moving averages, sevens, etc. But, but basically, that's what's going on. So, um, well, fine. That's uh, and then and then of course the. Uh, the general uh, garden pea trader is looking at moving averages in terms of, um, uh, uh, say, say they're using two moving averages. Is it is one moving average uh, crossing another? So, so that might be the twenty, and that might be the fifty, and they're and they're saying that uh, they're looking for the faster moving average crossing the slower moving average. In this case, on the down. And that would be, in their view, indicative uh, of market um, weakness and the start of maybe a downtrend, all, all this sort of stuff. And they're also looking at uh, how the moving averages uh, sort of uh, fan out. So uh, that might be 20, 50, 100. And, so, and they're all the sort of standard uh, ways of looking at moving averages. Well, right, well, so uh, what we tend to do, we, uh, well, we're going to be looking at... We look rather more mathematically at them, and it's time to sort of, uh, you know, the eyes to glaze over a little bit and uh, for settle down with your, your cup of coffee. But I'm going to basically gloss over the maths because it's uh, it's like driving a car. You don't need to know how the how the gearbox works to change from first to second. You just need to uh, stick your foot on the clutch and uh, ram the, the old gearbox in. So uh, right, so let's make a start then. So the way we um, we sort of break it down in terms of uh, um, what what is a a mathematical function then. So so we're looking at um, uh, basically a graphical uh, graphing a derivative function. So that's what we're looking at. So uh, graphing uh, right, where are we? derivative. Right, well, 
don't worry, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of it all, but, but there's a whistle stop tour then. Um, uh, a function is, is basically uh, something which relates to a set of inputs and, and outputs. So uh, a, a moving average is, um, is obviously an output and the inputs of that moving ad, uh, average are price, uh, price uh, usually closing prices depending on the time frame so and how and what is price price is um, basically a, an amalgamation of all the things that go into a market so so you've got this like you've got this like direction of causation you've got price um, going in uh, which is made up of all the things that happen in the market, technical, fundamentals, sentiment, etc. And then, then this is decanted into, so that's the input, and then the output is this, so, is this mo moving average, which, uh, which um, uh, we're looking at. So um, the, the key thing here is, is, is that you will have noticed that um, if, you, if, you, if you look at, say, 100 uh, EMA, just for sake of argument, that, that, and you plot it on, say, a, a longer term chart, so you can see it has more meaning. So, say it's a two hour chart, uh, you know, you, you, you often see situations, you know, like, like that. So, and then, now, so this would, this is like a rollover. In the moving average, and this and this is like a, a, a movement up in the in the moving average. Now, now what we're going to be looking at, um, uh, or I'm going to show you how uh, to look at, not in terms of mathematics because that's another story, but I can I can point you in the right direction. Um, basically, if one thing to notice is that is that um, if we're looking at derivatives. Uh, and then we can look at first and second derivatives. The, f the first derivative is, is a measure of, of slope, if you like, the slope of, uh, of a function, in this case, um, uh, moving average, right? So, so the first derivative is an indication of the slope of a function, and it's, it's akin to the velocity of something. So, so you know, we, may, it, we can be at a constant velocity. We can be doing like all speed. We can be doing sixty miles an hour, uh, and then and then what? The second derivative is a measure of the slope of the slope, if you like. So the second derivative gives us a change in this uh, velocity, which is another measure for acceleration. So acceleration and velocity in the market is really what we're looking at. And can we look at these via? Um, the standard uh, uh, moving average function or curve, if you like. So, and and that's what we're looking at. And some surprising things come out of this, even even at a relatively basic level. Hopefully, your eyes haven't totally glazed over yet. Glazed even. Uh, right. So let's keep going. Now, most people, when they're looking at uh, moving averages, um, and they say, "Oh, yes, the moving average is at the top here." Uh, that must have been a peak. Now, that's a reasonable assumption to make, but actually, it's not quite true. And uh, what happens is, is you've got, let's talk about slopes and uh, changes of slopes of, uh, of the moving average then. So you can see that the, the slope is, is bending up here, and then it's bending down here. And then there must be a point where it's zero. Uh, right, so it's, it's bending, and then it, it bends this way. Okay, so <coughs> what we've got here is is we've got we've got a uh, remember what, what we're measuring uh, we're measuring um, first and second derivatives. Now you can you can say that there must be a point here where because the slope goes from this way to this way there must be a, a point where where it's actually neutral or at a maximum. So when the slope is at a maximum. Now interestingly with how does this uh, sort of play into uh, you know the average trader? Well, the the thing to, to understand is that let's get rid of that. Um, is that you can put the odds very much um, in your favour just with some simple simple little thoughts and knowledge about uh, moving out. So so if the moving average is, uh, has been coming down and it's now turning up, um, now 
if we're going into an up phase, um, you'll, you'll get this like bending up and then it will bend down and then it will bend up and then it will bend down. Now, each one of these phases, you know, and mathematically it's, it's a version of different derivatives, each one of these phases is representing a faster and a slow phase in the market in terms of so so if you if you wanted to be long you want to be in this sort of phase here where where the moving average is is bending up rather than bending down so that's 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 the go phase and what you tend to get you can see that you tend to get price action which which comes off 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 a floor very quickly and you get a bounce and then you get this like pullback, which is, and then what's happening is, is the moving average is, is bending back down. And then, and then once you get to this position here, which is, which is our like point of, uh, of change, you get this like massive spike in, in, in the price action there, and then it starts tailing off again. So, and then, and then you get to this position. So, so when you're looking at moving averages, think in terms of which way is the moving average bending and if you want to be long you want to really you're you want to be trading in 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 the phase where um it's actually bending like this rather than like that because that will give you an extra boost all right and we can we can go on bang on about how we can show that mathematically but there's really no point and, and quite frankly it would put everyone to sleep including myself so so let's what happens on the on the way down so if you're looking if you're looking for speed this is this is the similar situation right okay so you tend to get it rolling off the top you tend to get a big thump down in price action and then it tends to retrace um, because because this moving average is starting to flatten out here now what the, the clever bit to real to realize is is that you is that it is that this could just be an initial, initial rollover and then you get this like bounce and then we could be uh, at the races again and moving on up but if it's a downtrend or uh, a, a down move then we're going to move into this point here which is which is the maximum inflection point if you like um, where and then you get this this big down move and that's what you're looking for when you're selling the market from, from moving averages so so you want to have your moving average moving into that sort of phase not um, that sort of phase because that's putting the air brakes on you're driving with the handbrake on this way you've got a tailwind and that's what you want. So, so that's one thing to realise is, is try and phase your trades with the correct, um, uh, you know, uh, convexivity of, of the moving average, if you like. Now, let's uh, have a look at, so just, just to wrap up so that you don't, you know, go, go too mad, um, let's just swing this over. Right, so the, th the easiest things to look out for is a sort of a, a basic guide. So if this is positive and this is negative, uh, and we draw uh, like a, a derivative function, which is, which is our interpretation of the moving average, if you like. Now, um, what have we got? Let's have a look. So, uh, right, so... Right, so let's suppose this is, this is your uh, EMA 100. Now, let's suppose it's been moving in, in this sort of way. Now, um, the interesting thing is here, you've got a peak, so you've got a max there, you've got a min there. Now, you've also, and in, in terms of the gradient, you see, so if you look at the gradient or slope, first derivative and you look at the change the change in uh, the slope of the slope second derivative then this is will give us some clues so this will coincide with a period of um, well it, it coincides with a period of zero here right in terms of we'll talk about that in a minute 
likewise this is zero okay now what what's happening then is the market um, you get so you've got a maximum point but it isn't it isn't a maximum or minimum in the market and that's where people are caught out and that's why you get this uh, this situation and if you do if you do the modeling and the maths and all the rest of it uh, and you sit in your car and you turn the ignition on and away you go so this is what we're going to be doing so uh, let's have a look so we've got um, with the maximum is actually at a, and we've also got another point here of zero, right? So, in terms of the function. Now, the maximum point, uh, remember that uh, the curve is rolling over, so it's rolling this way, and then it starts to roll back. Now, let's assume that, that this is the point of, in, uh, of inflection where this is the maximum, or a maximum. So. So we can come down from here, we've got an inflection point which takes us down to a lower point in the market if you like. Now we've also um, got another inflection point here which takes us down to uh, another point here. So, and this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. Okay, and then and then we've got a situation here where um, the curve changes here, and we've got an inflection point there. Now, this um, quite often you'll find that this is the is this is a top. Okay, now people using moving averages they wait for the top of the moving average. And the, if you look at another examples on your charts, you'll notice that what we're saying is, is quite often correct. So what you look at, you obviously don't know where the top's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, but as the moving average is, is uh, coming up and the market's on in an uptrend, you'll find you get a, a top, so the market will be chunking up and then it will get a top, and then you'll only realise it's a top once it, once it starts. So you get this like spike here. Now this quite often, it doesn't coincide with the top of the moving average, which is what most people think. And logically you might think that. But it comes before this. So this, this is what it does. It, 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 it's, your, it's your tell, if you like. And you obviously can't tell whether the moving average is uh, uh, peaked or the market is peaked until it's peaked. So you need to sort of see, yes, there's an obvious peak there. And on a longer time frame, that's more significant, say, at two hours. And then you can say, right, we know we're probably at this point here. We're probably at this inflection. That is probably this inflection point. Right, and then, and then the moving average starts to, to roll over up to this point, and you get a maximum. Right, so, so you get this situation. Um, right, and then, so, so what tends to happen is, is you get this situation. And then... Uh, and, then, and then you've got running it. So, so let's, let's uh, get away from the confusion then. So, so you get this, you've recognised this top retrospectively. You know, you've not predicted it. You've retrospectively recognised this top. And the moving average has got this shape. And it's likely that you were, this top has coincided with this. This has flagged you up. Now... The, the, the moving average then, then starts to roll over, which is our point here, which corresponds with the zero here, and the market starts to roll over, uh, and then, and then you, you get to this point zero. Now, now, this zero doesn't mean the minimum of the market again. What tends to happen is you get, is you get, a, is you get the market dropping to a, to a floor, which is here, which is coincides with, with our this, this our maximum point of inflection here as the market rolls over. So you get like a, and then because of the way the function uh, curve is, is, is derived, you then get a little bounce up to the zero again here, which represents this point here, uh, the zero here. Now, you then, as the market moves forward again, you then get, it then sort of has a, has a secondary rollover and gets to this inflection point here. And this gives you um, like a double dip, if you like. So this is why you, uh, if we can draw this in, you get, 
and people talk about the W, don't they? And, and, and the W is created in this sense um, via um, derivative functions. Now, so, so what you need to do to put all this into, uh, into your armory is you don't need to take a, you know, a degree level maths and, uh, and science. What you need to do is to think, right, so the starting point is I'm using um, a moving average in a different way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a moving average. I, the best way to look at things cold without the maths is to look at 100 EMA. So where are we? Is 100 EMA probably on a two hour chart. Now that's our experience. So if you do that and then you can scroll the graph back a bit because it's, you know, if you've got the graph a bit tight, it, it still won't be showing you much. But scroll the bar, the bar, the graph back a bit and, and you'll get to a, a situation where you, you can see a, a moving average uh, and the price action around it. Now, so you've done that. You're then thinking to yourself, right, I'm looking at um, first and second derivatives. Well, you won't be thinking that. You think, I'm looking at, um, is, is the graph curving up, sort of bending up like this, or is, it, or is it bending this way? Or is it bending down like that? Or is it bending this way? And I want to try and catch the, the speed part of the market, not the dirge part. So if I'm going up, I want it to be bending that way and not that way. If I'm going down, I want the opposite. I don't want it to be doing that. That will give you a, a, a tremendous advantage straight away. Now, disregarding that, if I go a little bit further and I want to say, can I identify uh, where we are in this um, uh, derivative function? Right. And the way to do that is to say, you know, uh, is, there a, is there an obvious top or, or, or bottom? And if you get this like this bottom, if you get the equivalent bottom and the market's made an equivalent bottom, then, then this, this works out into reverse. So don't think of this as the graphs going up, you can think of it the other way around. So, so if you've got a, say, a, the market makes an obvious floor um, and on the two hour and, and then comes back up, you're probably at um, you're probably at this inflection point here, uh, here, and then and then your next port of call will be the market rolling up instead of uh, so the market will start to roll up. So uh, you've identified that point that point there, the inflection point by the floor of the market, a nice big spike, and then what's going to happen then is the market's going to going to get a going to get a boost. Uh, and then, and then it's going to uh, you're into this sort of phase, and then you're going to get th this this W or on the other way round, you're going to get an M basically. Uh, but but let's not get involved in that too much. So so the big takeaway is is identify the the rate of change of the curve. Which way is it curving? Um, be aware that if you can identify this position here. And let's get rid of this once and for all. Um, you know, in the easiest way um, to to identify things. So that tends to be a, a top, um, and, and when it rolls over, that tends to be a floor. And that they, these are your inflection points. So that's what we're banging on about, really. I've probably uh, over over confused it as usual. But but that's that's your identification of that previous function. This is um, rem remember that that will be the actual top of the EMA, and that will be the actual floor of the EMA. If you get this um, uh, situation, then that's what you need to recognise. So can you recognise that inflection point there? and that inflection point there, because if you can, you're a million miles away um, towards uh, making some very good trades. Um, now, I know that was a bit, a bit mad and a bit rambling, but um, I hope that helped and was useful to you, and it's an alternative way, and it's basically some secrets behind moving averages. Thank you very much.